So in this video, I'm going to show you how to apply motion to your character, whether you're going to Maya or Unity, Unreal, whatever. You want to get your characters moving. So first, watch that video on how to convert your Ready Player Me character into something Mixmo can digest and apply motions to. And then whether you're going to Maya or Unity, it's going to be the same process. And I have two different videos on how to go to Maya and Unity. So this one includes the Maya version. If you're looking to go Unity, watch the first part and then jump to the Unity version of this video. Go to Mixamo.com. Log in and you'll sign in with a free Adobe account. Okay, let's get our character in here and walking. Do that. Click on the animations tab right here. Click on upload character. And going to select the character. Just drag and drop it into here. So this is the FBX counter because that's what Mixmo needs. This is why you had to do that little conversion a moment ago. Get your file formats all lined up. So now the file is about to show up with all the textures on it. Excellent. And your character is ready to be animated. Click on next. And next. You can download your character, but you already have the FBX version. Why download this one? Because this character has been renamed with the Mixmo bone structure allowing you to easily apply animations from Mixmo to it. So it's a good idea to download this character in the T-Pose, click on download. All right, let's get an animation onto this character. And to do that, just go here under the Animations tab and type in an animation such as Walk. And when you click on the Walk Swatch, you'll see your character begin to walk. Let's do some tiny adjustments to this. And one would be walk in place. If you're going to Unity or Unreal, you can use this root motion. Root motion just means the character is move, moving through the scene, much like you and I would do in real life. In place motion stifles that root motion. And so you just have that character walking in place, which is excellent for some quick animations. If you're going to Maya Blender, you might prefer it in place motion. This way you could take this walk cycle and just put it onto a path and make your character animate on path, which we'll be doing. One thing you might look out for before you export, do the hands hit right through the clothing? If they do, they go right through the clothing, colliding through the clothing. Just increase the arm spacing a little bit. Now you can see there's a lot more space in between the hand and the clothing. You do it very much, but then it becomes kind of this sillier walk. I don't know why this person would be walking that way. So play with the settings before exporting. I'm going to download this clip. Now, depending on what you're doing, you might download it with the skin where you just want to import this character and get it walking with this animation on it. And I'll do this one first. There's other uses though, like you're going to Unity, Unreal, and Maya, and Blender where you could just stack up a bunch of motions that belong to a particular character. In that type of case, when you download, you want to do that without the skin. So you're just capturing the bone motion and that will be applied to your character or many different characters within that scene. So click on download for that one. And the way you'll tell the difference besides the file names could be increased a little bit, um, file size, four megs, which will include the character and motion, or 440K, which just includes the motion. Okay, let's get that character from Mixmo walking. In Mixmo, you apply an animation to your character and you export it with the animation on the character. Motions are baked into the character. And so if you drag and drop that version into Maya and wait for it to load, you'll see your character shows up. And if you scrub the timeline, it does one walk cycle from frame 0 to 30, and that's it. Let me increase the timeline, say to 600 frames, which represents 20 seconds. And I'll increase this range slider potential, and you'll see that it just walks for that first bit. Now, two things. First, let's see our character with the textures on it. And to do that, all you have to do is click on the viewport, press the 6 key, and now your character shows up with the textures on it. To get this to continuously loop its animation, we're going to use the time editor. Go to shading and select x-ray joints and select the rootmost joint, which is right here. 
this controller is not selected. If you clicked here, that controller would be selected, but that's too much. In this case, you just want the animation on the skeleton, on that first child, the hip. So you could also do this by shift clicking to expand the armature and click here. And that would also select that hip. So either way, just select the hip, making sure this root controller is not selected. Then go to Windows, Animation Editors, and select the Time Editor. With that rootmost joint selected, the hip, click on this plus sign. Let me pull this back to frame zero. Plus. What that does, it transfers those key frames to this clip. And you could think of the clip as a container of information. That container of information, in this case, contains a walk cycle, a motion walk cycle. And as you think forward, sure, you can have clips of jumping, running, waving, and combine them all. But right now, even if I script the time editor, well, the animation stops. How to get it to continue in a loop? This icon right here, loop mode. And then just drag out this end. And as many times you want to loop through that animation. Cool, right? Now your character knows how, how to walk in a loop. If your character's not walking in real time, it like looks like it's going a million miles a second, make sure that instead of play every frame, you have 30 frames per second or 29 frames per second selected. I've got walking, which is good for some animations. If you want this object, this character to move throughout your scene, all you have to do is click that armature, which is this controller right here. So whatever the parent most object is, and you can animate that parent most object. Right now, go to frame zero, press the S key to place the first key on it. Let's say go to frame 600, use the move tool, just zoom out, drag the character forward, press the S key again, let me zoom way out. There's other ways to do this and you'll see in other videos, I'll show you how. I'm just introducing the concept of looping clips, of taking motion, making it into a clip, looping it, and then also animating the character. Zoom back in. And that's a little better. You see that gets a slow start. That deals with the animation curve. So one little last step as you beginning animating. You, know, you have to dive into some tools in order to perfect your animation. So go to the graph editor, Windows Animation Editor's graph editor. You can see the type of tangent, slow to start, and then it's even, then slows down. We don't want that type of tangent. You want linear motion to happen here. Marquee select right here. So making sure you get all the tangents and go to tangent linear and marquee select here, tangent linear. And now you have this straight line, no easing into the motion and slowing down at the other end. Let's close this, taking a look at the walk again. Now, any little sliding that's going on, that just means the character has to walk a greater distance per, which means moving out that last key frame further, and then your character won't look like they're just dragging themselves to work in the morning. That's a little bonus. What if you didn't want your character to walk on a straight line and you wanted to walk on a path? I'm going to select this key and delete it. And same thing with that first key, selecting that key and delete it. Let me close this timeline editor. Character still knows how to walk, but it's not going anywhere. Create a path by going under Create Curve Tools and use the EP Curve Tool. You could draw out a spiral, but why not just create some type of winding path like this? Where whatever path makes you happy. It could go up and down hills. It could lead back to the beginning again. You could even use the going under modeling curves, open, close curves. You can even make it so you have a path and you have your object. Now, to make all this a lot easier, create some object. It could be a controller. I'm creating a cube right now. 
Let me move my cube here and scale the cube up. And the goal will be to attach this cube to the motion path and then attach this character to the cube. This will give you a lot of flexibility and this will get you around any connection issues that might come up. To make this cube not render, because you don't want your cube to render in the scene, go under the cube's second tab, render stats. If you just turn off everything, this hides the mesh from rendering. So you see in the viewport, it won't show up during rendering. Now that that's done, and this cube could be anywhere in the scene. Select the cube, shift click on the path. Under animation, go to constrain, motion paths, and attach the motion path. And that's it, your cube's on the motion path and your character's just walking in place. We'll fix that right now. Move your character by selecting that controller underneath it, the rootmost object of it, and place it on top of the cube or near the cube. And now parent this controller to the cube by pressing the, by selecting the controller and pressing the shift left mouse button to select that cube and P for parenting. Now wherever that cube goes, the character will follow and the cube is going on the path and the character's following, don't worry, that controller isn't, that box isn't rendering. So now you got your character walking along this path. 